So let's jump in the command line. I'm in a, in a shell, uh, an, an empty folder. And the first thing I can show you is with the Datafy CLI installed, I can just type Datafy and get a list of the available comments. Uh, you can see, for instance, uh, specifically what we explained, so project and environment. It is interesting to know that when you install Datafy, the CLI comes bundled with auto-completion scripts for your shell. So when you type Datafy and then hit tab, it will display a list of available commands alongside a description of each command. And if you go inside a specific command like project here and you hit tab again, it will display a list of subcommands for, in this case, the project command. Again, with a description of what each command does. And so while we will go through a few of these in more details in this demo, it's, it's always useful for you to know that you can use autocompletion to, to see what is available. Uh, let's let's focus on that. So the first thing I want to do is to create uh, a new project. So for that, I type datafy project new. I give it a name. In this case, I will call it uh, my test pipeline, and I will start from a template. In this case, I want to start from a Python template. It's asking me what's the name of my project, my test pipeline in this case, what's the, the module name for the, the Python packages. Uh, this is going to be orchestrated in our flow, so it's asking me when do we want to start running that pipeline. In this case, I'm just going to answer today. It's also asking me what's the schedule of that workflow. Uh, by default, it's daily, but you can specify any cron expression that Airflow will, will accept happily. And then finally, in this case, the template is asking you which flavor of Python package management you prefer, in my case, big tools. Once this is executed, what this will do is create a folder. And if I look, sorry, into that folder, you will see the code that has been scaffolded. And the code that has been scaffolded com contains a few things, uh, most notably the Docker file, which will explain how to describe how, how to package your code and deploy it. Uh, the DAX folder, which contains the Python files describing your DAG or several DAGs, if you want to have several DAGs, of your project. So that's for Airflow. And finally, of course, your source and your test. If we look at what the code looks like in a code editor, we will see that uh, on top of that, there is a hidden folder with the the data file metadata, which is just the ID of your project, which template was used, um, and where the DAGs are. So in practice, as a developer, I don't need to, to worry about any of that. The only thing I need to provide is, of course, my source code. In this case, it's just a simple uh, data pipeline running a very simple Python code that is fetching data from a, an open weather API and displaying it in the logs, so nothing fancy. But of course, that's where you start modifying your code to do anything relevant to your business logic. We also provide um, a test folder and then in the Docker file, we describe how to ship your Python dependencies in this case, install them and then make sure that the last layer of the Docker image is copying your code. In practice, this without me doing anything uh, with the code, I can immediately do data file project build which will create the Docker image for this project and will send it to Datafy and to Amazon ECR, in this case, to make sure the Docker image is ready to be used in the next uh, deployment of Airflow. So, of course, the first time you run this, it's going to take a few seconds to, to build the different layers and, and push them to, to ECR. It shouldn't take too much time. It's done now. If I show you now the, the user interface, so this is the main user interface. I'm on a demo account here, and you can see that already a few environments have been created in the past, and also a few projects have been created in the past. But now we should be able to see uh, our new project, which is called My Test, My Data Pipeline, or My Test, My Test Pipeline. Here we go. So th this is the project we just created. If I go here. We can see it's not been deployed yet, it's not been executed yet. 
So the UI doesn't give us anything yet, and uh, for a good reason, which is we didn't deploy the project yet. So the next, so the next step is going to be for me to create an environment. So I'm going to type data file environment new and give it a name. In this case, I'm going to call this uh, test environment. Ah, I cannot have an underscore in there. So test environment it is. So now that I type this, uh, you can see here that there's a new test environment being provisioned. And this is going to take two minutes to provision a managed airflow, completely managed airflow. The, the thing to, to realize with environments is that you can have as many environments as you want. They can represent your development environment, your personal test environment, and it can also represent, of course, a production environment. So a bit similar to what you can think of about Git branches, where you're, as a developer, you're encouraged to just create a branch, test it, and get rid of your branch when you don't need it anymore. The same is true about environments. So this will take a few, um, as I said, like two minutes to get ready. Once we get to an environment, we will be able to deploy a project. So in this case, I will be able to say, hey, we just built a project, but now I want to deploy it. So data file project deploy to an environment which is called test environment in this case. So if I just do that, the deployment will happen. And if I now go to my project, my test pipeline, and I go to the deployments, I will see that it's been deployed indeed. So now let's see if the test environment is ready. So. You see now it's loading a brand new Airflow for me where there is no DAG uh, yet because of course this is the first project we deployed to it. We're going to have to wait a few seconds for the project to be deployed. So I'm just going to refresh my page. Yes, we need to wait a little bit more. But so th the concept is that the, the DAG I just created in my project will be loaded and then we, we will be able to, to schedule tasks and, and see their logs and so on. So it should be ready any moment now. Yes, so now you can see that the DAG has been deployed, my test pipeline. Of course, by default, it's not on, so I will turn it on. And once it's turned on, in any moment, it's going to start triggering the task. In this case, the DAG is made of a single task, uh, which is, a, like I said, a sample task fetching weather data. So if I refresh, now it's running. And in a few seconds, it should be done. So now you can see it has run successfully. And now if I go to the task execution, as expected, I can see that my sample task has been running. I can see that it succeeded. And here I can access the logs and the metrics. So in this case, the logs are very short. It's just saying it's running on the test environment. It's indeed connecting this open weather API and returning a 200 response. So it's really a, a dummy pipeline, but you can see that I didn't have to care about any of the infrastructure. I just created a project, deploy my code, and I get my output immediately. So now we've seen how to create a project, build it, and deploy it to a specific environment. And you can imagine that the development cycle from here is simply modify your code, rerun data file project build, rerun data file project deploy, come to the Airflow UI, clear a given task, wait for it to be rescheduled and executed, and then you can check the logs again. But actually, that is more of a stable development cycle where when everything is already quite stable, we also offer a much more interactive way of working with data file, which is data file project run. So what this will do is from the command line directly, you can execute your code remotely as in production with the same conditions on the same Kubernetes cluster and getting the, the logs tailed to your command line. So this gives a much faster interactive loop 
for, for developers. Um, and so let me show you that. So if you do datafy project run in the same project as I was before, as I was using before, I just need to tell it where to run. So in this case, it's going to be in the same test environment. So this is going to, again, build my Docker image and immediately run it in communities using the same circumstances as the, the real production. So now we'll wait for a few seconds. You see that the container is being created and we get exactly the same logs that we, we've seen uh, through Airflow and through Datafy, but directly in the command line. So now if I modify my code, I can really get this quick feedback, feedback loop of a few seconds and I get the to see the changes.